All right, there we go. Gotta get that out of my way. All right, so here we are looking at uh, Geo Dan and his AMX 12 ton. So I went to go ahead and just do a first look at this and accidentally streamed the whole damn thing. <laughs> oh, crap. All right, so let's try this again. Except now I've seen everything. <coughs> so. Okay, so right out of the gate, I think enemy team may have the better scouts. Because, well, 5916 is nothing and 12T is slightly better than that. They got they got active scouts and stuff. They got the clown car with a tier 6 clown car. He's somewhere between relevant and uh, useless. I mean, the only good news is he can't pull off the same bullshit the rest of them can. So, we got Geodan here, and he's uh, got a uh, passive scouting setup. Not my preferred, but it kind of works for the 12T. And I believe uh, Geodan has the better heavy tank setup. And in this kind of matchmaking, Eagle 7 could basically count as a heavy tank. So, not a whole hell of a lot. Nothing to really say. They might have the better artillery main because they got two M44s. And we're stuck with an SU-8. But yeah, we're, we're just going to see what I point out and if anything can be helpful. A Challenger Super Hellcat basically can act as uh, medium tanks. The Hellcat to itself to a lesser extent. So... Right away, we're going to see, because of the passive scouting uh, setup of our equipment, Geodan's going to try to find a bush and park his ass there. And here's about as good a bush as any. And we're already getting lit. This is actually pretty good for getting the early uh, lights on the heavy tanks as they go in. Might give any artillery in position to a quick chance to get an early shot, so... Not bad, but you know this. This here, we're back on Poland because screw me, I hate this map. <laughs> well, there goes the clown car heading for the hill, and of course the heavies are just going to be heavies and try to heavy it out in the factory. And there's the Type 64 doing the active scouting, <clears throat> jumps in the ditch. Uh. Not entirely sure what R5916 thinks he's doing. He should be actively trying to scout. So, scout, you get forward, you light him, and you just try to keep him away and pray someone actually hits him. And, yep, Type 64 is coming up and around through the trench. And nothing too unexpected. We're getting someone's shooting them. Good, good, good. Uh, Jill, start moving. Yeah, like the but the first shot you should have started moving because someone is probably going to see you with that Type 64 right in front of you. By the second shot, your ass should have been flying out of that area, quick as could be. When a scout is anywhere near you, just assume anytime you fire, you're spotted. You'll probably take a risk if you see there's a couple bushes between you and them. And uh, see if you have nerves of steel, but it's almost always better to start moving. So yeah, this bush has lost all its usefulness, so time to move forward. And so far, so good. One took one shot's... Team is actually doing. We got rid of one of the better scouts of the enemy, which is, you know, always good. So we have that going for us, which is nice. Okay, Ugh, I don't know about firing here. If there's anyone on that ridge, you would have been lit. But yeah, definitely a good idea to back out. Good news is you weren't actually lit, so it didn't really matter. 
All right, so we got a situation happening up north. They went ahead and pushed up over the hill, but they got across all this open ground. So we'll, we'll probably just got to observe it right now before we hit full panic mode. But that Leo is hanging on to dear life on that little island. <laughs> Getting some nice spawning. Good, good, good. And we're just going to be chilling here. Oh, Challenger. Now, there, now there's something that's going to make me nervous. Because now there's someone for sure up on this ridge. And he potentially getting into being able to spot but thanks thankfully this camera and bush is going to keep him back but if he gets closer uh, he's he just makes me nervous being too he's too close now okay that's all it is you got to try and keep your distance and anyone get too close got to be shut down and thankfully the team did shut him down <clears throat> So yeah, so much about this so far, looks like it should be completely winnable. And I see nothing, I see no reason why it shouldn't be. Nice, 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 getting those sweet, sweet spotting. But it might be drying up, why are we shooting? Okay, misfire, it's fine. We want an even number, let's go with that, it's even better. Uh, 5916, the Lord knows what he's doing. If if I was at 5916 and I'm just assuming and I haven't actually played it, I would be running up here and trying to go ahead and start peeling this guy out and maybe trying to get this guy lit. This guy needs to die, freaking clown car, and the T20 just needs to be shot to pieces. <clears throat> so... Their team's turtling up in the factory. Our team is turtling up in the factory. We got T29 trying to go where the Leo was. And he's going to end up probably facing the same thing. Of uh, having to cross this entire open ground. With the T20 sitting on top. And if the T20 can, he could probably work some of the bushes up there. And make the life of the T29 incredibly miserable. But, yeah, I agree. It's been about time to reposition. We aren't really getting any good spottings anymore. <clears throat> and we're just chilling right now. Some very, very nice smoke clouds. Thank you, Geo. Okay, yeah, this is this is just chilling. Right now, what should be happening is this entire force in the factory should be trying to zerg across, cross, and start at least getting into the center of it. That will go ahead and provide much, much better fighting capability and be start putting a very large threat to anything hiding up on this hill. I think fire on this hill will be lit by in here and be shot to shit. <clears throat> but right now, our teams are just chilling. We, we know where pretty much most of their tanks are. This guy is kind of starting to get himself out of position. But I know my initial assessment is this guy's pretty much on his own. But there's a ski. As long as he's kind of along the outskirts of this village, this uh, T-29 over here is going to be able to have shots all down because this guy's lighting and won't try and come after him. So, in a few minutes, that T-34 is going to decide he doesn't like life anymore, and is going to further isolate himself and keep him, keep anyone coming after him away from uh, the rest of his teammates. <clears throat> so, right about now, we, we need to be start jumping this uh, T-34. You know, just go ahead and get with your uh, platoon buddy over there in the Hellcat and just go, okay, let's get him. Here we go. He is way isolated. This is exactly the moment we need. Now we just got to go ahead and jump his ass. He's way out by himself. So just end him. Perfect. 
Perfect, perfect, perfect. That was exactly what needed to happen. <clears throat> but, surprise, he wasn't 100% by himself, because apparently we've been missing a tiger. <laughs> So right now we just gotta it's just the tiger's full health peel away just get away from him we could go ahead and leave him alone we try and keep him lit for artillery or god or whoever the hell else decides they have an interest in him but right now i feel distance is going to be the better part we just need to get away from this tiger just leave him be he's by himself we'll come back we come back for the tiger another day oh tiger's back now I would, may go ahead and try and start seeing if I can't poke a few shots out at this tire because, well, this moron decided to light himself. But, might be considering, you know, the other tiger and the T-29, just might be better to just get the hell away. Like, right now, as long as that tiger is stuck out in the village, he's by himself. We could, might have to keep an eye on him. For any other reasons, because he he could get into a position, and start putting some shots into the center here, and that be bad. But looks like our team's starting to find their man pants and starting to make a good push. Tigers back. We're probably got lit. Yes, we did. Again, I wish I didn't accidentally stream the uh, first assessment, because then you got all the raw thoughts. On the entire battle war instead of me trying to pretend oh no i never seen this coming <laughs> but yeah our team is making starting man up and start making a push we got tiger as a one shot now right now we got two options on how we can go ahead and work over this tiger and well there's always the option of we just ignore the tire let's always leave that on the table but we can try and work these bushes try and keep things spotted just go out there keep them honest <clears throat> Uh, there might be a couple more bushes here, or you have to use the buildings themselves. And, uh, just work with our teammates, and uh, hopefully slowly bring them down. Oh, yeah, the other option is we go join this push over here, and just clean them out as fast as we can. Be a, get a fast little bastard in there, and just distract the hell out of them. And RT-29 should have already been moving. He's, I don't know why he's chilling, but our team is now pushing around the center here. See this? They're coming out and around the factory. Now this, because we're not keeping the Tiger lit, might be giving the Tiger a chance to turn around and go, Oh, hey, I got a bunch of shots on these guys now. And it's about, and it could potentially start pouring the DPM. Now this isn't too bad a push. Like, the worst part is, is that the box tank here has to go ahead and turn all the way around before you can fire. But if we can get every, all four of you with the T-29, go in and push in a coordinated unit. We'll uh, go ahead and uh, just completely mop up this area. But this is going to be the moment that everything goes to shit. <clears throat> It was perfectly winnable, and uh, now it's starting to not look like it. T-29 is incredibly full health. We should have had our own T-29. Yeah, most of his health pushing in but earlier. But now they're caught out between the Tiger, the T-20, and the T-29. That entire push is just dead. T-29 is now... Our T-29 is completely isolated, and we still haven't heard from our pal the Tiger in a while. And... Yeah, T-29 is just going to die, because he sat there too long. Just, oh. Uh. There's nothing we can do about that. He's dead. He waited too long, and he paid for it. Now we got the tiger. Now we got it. We're, we are out of friends. Okay, we got two more, and we're just about out of them. So we got to start killing We gotta start killing as many people as we can, as quickly as we can, without taking any damage. And now we gotta go ahead and just start blasting the tiger as fast as we can. So far, so good. 
And there's a useful ammo rack. Good, good job, good job. Okay, everyone to work over the tiger, but now, <clears throat> now we should be repositioning to uh, start getting spots as they try to leave this factory from the north. And that's because we know that they're going to be coming from the north. So we got to reposition to start trying to get early spots and give our team as much time to aim in, zero in, and just start picking them apart as they come out. Now, I'm not a fan of this position. I would have taken myself a position more over here got it, because there's too many trees, too many bushes. We're not going to see through them, which will give... These, I want to see them when they leave the factory. I don't want to see them when they're already in the ditch. Because hell can't, can't shoot them in the ditch. I want to see them as far out as I can and make them worried. So I'm not, I'm not crazy about this position itself. Because look, here's the T-29. He already crossed out of the factory and into the ditch. He's pretty well protected now. Oh, T-20. Yes, there's the prime target. He needs to go. He's a two-shot. That's right. Fortunately, we just lost our artillery, so there went some of our help. But that was very useful. Good. That's a good, useful kill. One less tank. Now, that just leaves the T-29 more or less by himself. <clears throat> so, we got to try and figure out how to uh, work, work over the T-29. And he's in a dip, so uh, there isn't much hope. We'll have to wait for him to just decide he wants to uh, leave to the flat ground. So, we got two options. We got try and keep the T-29 lit, maybe give the Hellcat time to do his thing. Or we could turn around, start going to the base, and uh, kill the Arty, get two on base. And now T-29 cannot outcap the base, and uh, he probably can't make it back to his own. That might have been the winning play in this game. Now... Another thing to keep note is the time. We're getting down to about three minutes. Three nice long minutes, but we just keep being a little passive. Things aren't going to get done, get done, and time is going to run out. Or we're not going to have enough time to deal with everything. But now we know the T-29 is on the base. Or a very sneaky artillery that managed to get past us. Either way... Now we have to deal with the base. So once again, there's two options. We basically have one guy peel away and uh, go start hunting down the arty and start applying pressure to the cap while one goes back to reset. <clears throat> now, like I said, I'm not very familiar with how many bushes there are along here. So for my money, if I was the Hellcat, I'd be coming up and trying to push up against this hill. So I could be a little bit more hold down. And uh, I will have pretty much a mutual spotting of the guy. Yeah. Alright, now we're going to have Geo go ahead and move in. Not good. Geo, go to the hill. Don't go wide, go to the hill. Oh, that's better. Go for that hill. Again, this will probably be like a mutual spotting for the most part because of how close we are. But this is the only area that I guarantee has bushes, so there's a chance we might not go ahead and be lit. And there's T-29. <coughs> Hear that? That's two minute warning. We are running out of time. Focus down the T-29. M44 on his own is blind. You will outspot him. Plus, he's an easy kill. T-29 needs to go because he's the one who's going to chase, try chasing you down and keep staying on you. T-29, I believe, may have just seen the Hellcat. Should, should have focused down the T-29. T-29 is going to go for the Hellcat. And there goes the Hellcat. So, kind of a misplay. I, I agree. We all want to kill the artillery. But the artillery isn't the biggest threat. Sure, he could get a lucky shot, but he's probably going to miss you anyway. But the T-29 is going to keep coming for you, and and we're sending about one shot for him anyway. we got to eliminate the bigger threats. 
So we're peeling away, and it's not a bad idea. We can go, you know, peel away, reload, let him just kind of chase us a bit. Because he wants to win. But yeah, now the time is really, really tight. So I probably just needed to take the risk and just go right, as soon as you reloaded, turned right back around and went for, right for the T-29. That may have gave you a little more time to try to do a little more arty hunting. But right now, the only way we're going to finish winning this is killing the arty. And uh, the arty is going to have to be in a nearby area. We don't even got time to reload the clip. We just got to beeline it to the nearest arty. That's it. This is it. Go time. And this is where the optics may have been better because... The seconds are crucial. We can't stop and cook the binox off. It takes too long. And the artillery may very well have been somewhere in this view range while we were rolling around. We could have known where to look. But it's over. Nothing else. Uh, it was close. So, a few things. We could have kept the uh, tiger a little more honest, kept them spotted. Uh, you know, T29, we probably didn't have enough time. So, several different ways, and this entire thing failed because a push got happened, but one guy decided to sit on his ass in the back in that T29, and then he decided to come in after the push already failed. So, he died for no reason. So... Well, that's all I got for you. I hope this helps. So, later.